Today I'm going to talk to you about a couple of Harbor Freight products. This is the Harbor Freight Bigfoot Panel Wagon. I don't like this wagon. It's, it's handy to have and I like having a wagon for my daughter. But this wagon has some features that I'll show you in a minute that really are lacking. So today, in true Styles automotive fashion, not leaving well enough alone, I'm going to take this Bigfoot wagon and a garden wagon, the steel mesh deck wagon, and I'm going to combine the two. I'm going to take the chassis off of this wagon and put it onto my Bigfoot panel wagon. Like I said, in true Styles automotive fashion, I can't leave well enough alone. If you are interested in automotive modification videos or automotive troubleshooting and general automotive maintenance, please subscribe and like this video and check out my other videos on my channel. The Bigfoot panel wagon is lacking. This wagon has the capacity of only 300 pounds or 330 pound capacity. The garden wagon has a thousand pound capacity. Let me show you the main feature that I dislike on this wagon is this center pivot front suspension. When you do that and you turn to the side, the wagon has a tendency to tip. Where the garden wagon struts so that it the center it doesn't center pivot, it pivots out on the wheels. So it's less likely to tip. That's the main feature. The other thing is the way this is mounted to the bottom of the wagon right here. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I'll pull on the tongue of the wagon, but the, the whole wagon flexes. It's, it's a sheet metal chassis on it. There's no frame. I don't like that. Another thing I don't like is the tongue length. When I'm pulling on it, my foot hits the tire right here, or the tire hits my foot when I'm pulling on it. So the garden wagon has a little bit longer tongue to it. It's a stronger tongue. It has a cushioned handle. And it's much more robust. Instead of this tiny little handle that barely fits my hand, it's got a big wide handle. So those are the reasons I'm going to convert my wagon into a, a heavier suspension. So I'm going from an F-150 style suspension to an F-350 suspension with the same overall red wagon feel. Another design consideration. This panel wagon costs about 60 bucks from Harbor Freight with uh, just on sale without any of the, the discounts. The garden wagon costs about $80 on sale. And I used a 20% off coupon today to purchase this one. So I got it for about 60 bucks. So I went from a $60 wagon to a $120 wagon. I don't know, to me it's worth it. The extra, the extra features of uh, not being so tippable and having a longer handle on it. Another design consideration, when uh, this last weekend, when we were using the wagon, my wife put the the panel wagon up into the truck. So I don't want this wagon to be too heavy that she can't lift it in the truck. If uh, it is too heavy, she won't use it or I'm gonna have to be with her when we use it and I'm gonna have to be the one that loads it and unloads it out of the truck. So this wagon, this Bigfoot panel wagon, she can lift it into the back of the truck by herself. My original idea was to use this old garden wagon that I have. This garden wagon is probably 20 years old and I was gonna cut it down so that I was gonna reuse this frame to strengthen my red wagon. And then this is about six inches longer than the chassis of the red wagon. I was gonna cut it off here and bend the angles in and box this off and keep this back here. So I had extra storage area thinking that I could put a cooler or something back here. But, um, I decided instead that this, this wagon is so useful, I use it quite a bit, hauling wood around, firewood, that I wanted to keep it. So I thought I'd just go and purchase another wagon. The benefit to you is 
that you can go to Harbor Freight and purchase both of these wagons and do what I'm doing in the video. Real quick, I'll show you on this wagon the benefit of this type of steering. See how it pivots out at the wheel? So it has a, the tie rod type suspension in the back. So this one doesn't tip. Even if you turn it all the way, it's still not tippable. So I can put all my weight down on my hand here in the corner and it still doesn't tip. To me, that's a great benefit in safety when I have my daughter on board on the little red wagon. I don't want it to tip over. And that other wagon is very tippable with that center pivot suspension in the front. You can see though that the back suspension is very similar on both wagons. And the garden wagon uses the same wheels as the red wagon. It has exactly the same wheels. But the garden wagon has nuts on the end of the axles. The little red wagon just has cotter pins. So again, I see that as another advantage in strength. So again, going from an F-150 to an F-350 suspension. Another design consideration, the garden wagon has the bolts welded to the frame here. So it's got three bolts for the rear suspension. And it looks like it's interchangeable that you can use front for rear on this frame. But all the bolts are welded to the frame, which gives it probably a lot of strength. So I'm not gonna be able to reuse those bolts. I may be able to use the bolts from the little red wagon though. Before I get started, I'll show you the components of the garden wagon one more time. So rear suspension, front suspension with the spindles, and then the tongue and yoke, and then the reinforcing struts and the tie rod goes across here. If I mock up the front suspension, put the wheels on it, you can see that the garden wagon is wider, tracks wider than the red wagon. The suspension is much beefier, but it's using those same tires and it's gonna put them more outboard. Does that mean I'm gonna need clearance lights? on my new wagon? Probably. In the rear, the rear suspension, this bracket is also much beefier than the red wagon suspension, but the red wagon has two outboard struts, which I like. The struts come here and then have the outboard screws going through the base of the wagon, where the new one just has the one that'll go to the center. So I'm going to have to see how I can reinforce that in the rear. But I definitely want to use this rear piece because it's much beefier than mine and it's wider. I can easily locate where that rear suspension is going to go. I'm just going to reuse these hole locations. They don't exactly match up with the holes on the new suspension, but, but they'll have to go outboard a little bit. But at least that's a reference point for where the suspension is located. And I can move it forward and aft as I want to. For this front suspension, I wanna make sure I maintain a reference so I know where that, that center line of that tire location is at. So I'm gonna mark that. Making sure my tongue is straight out the front because that affects where the wheel's at significantly. So I'm just gonna put a piece of tape here indicate where that's at and from my eyeball that looks pretty close from your angle on the camera looks like I'm off a little bit but you're not exactly lined up with the center line of the tire yeah I'll do that on the other side too I'm gonna use the directions and partially assemble the front suspension so that I can, when I take the front suspension off the red wagon, I'll be able to use this suspension and mock it up to be able to drill my holes on the bottom of the chassis. So what I'm planning to do is don't reinforce the chassis, just mount it 
with screws in through the sheet metal just like the original is done if i don't like that i'll have to take it back apart and then reinforce it maybe build a frame for it to mount it but i think that'll be strong enough and probably stronger than mounting it here in the center of the floor because i'm going to try to reinforce it and then mount it over here to the side i don't think i'm just going to use my one bolt hole in the center we'll see how it goes The steering linkage needs to go on top of the individual spindle brackets here so that this cross member can sit down here and so that these two bars, these two bars are level with each other because it's, it's a flat bar here. I'm going to use a 12 millimeter on the bolt head and a 13 millimeter on the nut and tighten those up a little bit more than hand tight since they're self-locking nuts. Tighten those up a little bit so it's not quite so sloppy for me. Especially this one, which I'm going to have to have that pivoted to the center to figure out where that hole needs to be drilled. Do that after. I'll locate these holes first, these two holes, and then I'll do this one. Let's see what that looks like. A little tight. Putting a washer in here or using some rod ends here and a rod across here would be nice using some rod ends at these pivot points would be nice well maybe not there but putting a washer under here to pivot on would probably take out some of the friction out of this point same way here i think i'll do that later but not right now i'll take it back apart later right now i'm just gonna use it to locate where i'm gonna drill my holes These old screws and nuts it's a 10 millimeter nut and a Phillips screwdriver head on the top there's four of them So I think these are long enough I can reuse them. About a half inch of thread sticking out on the bottom of them. fit tight into those holes. Tight. So that's a, a good look at the old one. That's the flimsy sheet metal that I had to reinforce those extra washers that I put underneath there to uh, so I could tighten it up. And then so it wouldn't uh, so it wouldn't be too tight, but tight enough. So you can see extra uh, washers underneath the underneath the nut right here, and then a washer between the nut and the cotter pin to keep everything tight. Otherwise, the nut would loosen up. Kind of a, a sucky design the way they did that. Very weak. Probably cheap to manufacture though. Let's see. 
here's the what I've got to decide now is if I put the frame up here this is where I'd like it because this edge is the strongest right here the sheet metal and this has some flex in this member right here so you have to push it down to to get it to uh, so that this member is flat on the sheet metal I can either put it up here where it's flat or I can bring it back here if I put it up here my uh, I'm way off my wheels are gonna be way forward and maybe that's okay I don't really need it to be any more stable so I really don't need it to be any longer that way it'll help it climb in curbs if the wheels sticking out but I think the wheels already sticking out enough if I put it back here on this flat sheet metal that'll put the wheels more in line with where they were before I'm already longer on my tongue by much more than I was before so I think the thing to do is go here but I think I'm gonna try to mock it up right here with a couple of clamps first and turn it over and put the wheels on and see what it looks like okay that's roughly where I want it just got it in with a couple clamps and don't think that's too bad uh, we'll stick out a little bit further I could probably go back and put it at the other spot it would be just fine too the wheels are gonna stick out you know as long as the wheels stick out in front here so you can climb over curbs easy which I don't think it'll be an issue either way so I have to think about what I want to do if I want to put it up here I think it'll be stronger or back a little bit which will work out fine with the wheelbase turn it back over make sure it's positioned in the right spot and uh, mark it so you can drill a couple of holes now these are metric so um, these are like a 0.228 drill bit to drill my holes this is a 0.228 so doesn't quite fit in that hole it's a little sloppy in the other holes so that hole must have deformed a little bit so I've decided to stay up on this ridge up here instead of going back to this flat back here that'll give my wagon a little bit aggressive look kind of like a rock crawler or something sticking the front wheels out a little bit so position it and eyeball it here i've got the the lines on the they're stamped into this wagon into the sheet metal so i can use them as a guide the outside of the brackets just line up with that so that's that's real good and I'm gonna mark that slot the oval around the oval with a sharpie pen and then I'm gonna aim for the center of that so I'll have a little bit of adjustment so there's my my two marks let me just quickly double check that four and a quarter using the one inch mark so three and a quarter to the edge of the slot and using the one inch as a reference at three and a quarter to the edge of the slot there so I'm in pretty good shape I like that so I can punch it go to the center of that very center of that slot Out. and then I'm gonna drill it if I had one with me this would be a good time to use it too much pressure yeah just a little bit of pressure I'm gonna go to the center of that slot ways
and this light pressure didn't take much it's just sheet metal pretty thin gauged Chinese sheet metal and I'll go to my 0.228 is what I'm going to use that should be close enough for my screws my metric screws and they're like uh, eight millimeter screws six or eight millimeter screws I'm just going to gently try not to punch a hole I'm trying to cut a hole a hole. There we go. I want to put this back in place because of these slots are bigger right here. I want to uh, make sure I use the washers that came with it. It came with some like some eight millimeter washers here. I'm going to use those because uh, the original ones from the red wagon are very small. They're just made to, to fit with the sheet metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these in addition to the red wagon ones. I think that proves that you can use the fasteners that came with the little red wagon if you want to but I think that that small head on the bolt is going to be a problem on this sheet metal so what I'm going to do is use some stainless steel bolts I'm going to go to a quarter inch stainless steel bolt and then I'm going to use quarter inch fender washers on the inside underneath the head of the bolt I think that'll add some more strength. Then we'll see if we need to reinforce it later. But I think that's the way I'm going to start. I'm going to pull back on the this strut and mark it. So there's a little tension on it. Punch. Yeah, a little pressure. Not too much. Don't need too much. Okay. So that's what I've got so far. Now I've got more bolt protruding inside than before. You know, I've got the head of a quarter inch bolt sticking up with the fender washers. But out here, probably doesn't matter. I'm gonna put a rug inside here for my daughter to sit on anyway. So they don't need to be as flat as these ones, I don't think. So. That might rub on the butt a little bit right there, but I'd rather have a real bolt and uh, a fender washer on it. It's going to be much stronger, I think. We'll see if we have to do, reinforce it any more with a frame than just the sheet metal. Let me throw the wheels on the front real quick and show you what it looks like. Okay, that's it so far. You can see it's the center line of the tires. Or move forward a good three inches. And the wheel, the track width is a little bit wider. We got a little bit of flex, a little flex in the, the middle of the pan there. I'd have much rather, instead of just having 
one strut come up to the center, if we would have had two, one on each side, so we would have picked up this, the strength of this edge of the sheet metal. We'll see if we have to run some kind of a brace across there. Could easily do that with a piece of angle iron or aluminum angle or something. Before we move on to the back suspension, I'm going to put a washer in between these two members, in between this steering link and the spindle arm here, and then the pivot points here. That'll give it a smaller friction area, so uh, it'll turn easier. It's a little stiff right now, and put some lube on it. And then I can also install the wheels and lube them. This is interesting. I was going to use the old wheels since they're already lubed up, but they're a little bit wider than these are, and they're a little bit uh, bigger diameter right here, just a little bit. So here's the the old the red wagon wheel, which see I had a washer for a spacer there. Well, I put them on the put them on this spindle. See how the there's there's uh, it's taking up threads right there. It's not it's all the way on and it's loose a little bit rocks a little bit so i don't want to reuse the those wheels on the on the new spindles and i don't want to use a washer on them anymore but i need to lube these up before i put them on all right well we could probably stop there with the new suspension on the front of the wagon but uh the rear hasn't been done yet, and the front sits just a little bit higher, about three quarters of an inch higher than the back of the wagon, but I'm really happy with the way the wagon steers and the stability of the front end. It doesn't tip it near as easy. It turns and rolls real easy after I put the washers into the steering links. So that rear suspension isn't as heavy so I still want to change it and the rear suspension you can see is about an inch wider in the front maybe not quite an inch I'm not measuring it perfectly you may have, my alignment isn't perfect but it's a little bit wider in the front end than the back end so I still want to change that back end but really to take advantage of everything I'm talking about this is probably all you need to do you could stop at this point my other goal was to keep the weight down on the trailer and the original wagon weight was 24.4 pounds or 11.07 kilograms with the front suspension modification that I did like I'm showing you right now I added 4.2 pounds or 1.9 kilograms so now the wagon weighs 28.6 pounds or 12.97 kilograms the goal of this video was to keep the design simple enough and provide enough detail so anybody with a drill and a few hand tools could assemble this wagon. With that said, this became a two-part video. Part one for the front suspension and part two for the rear suspension. So that concludes part one. Please see part two for the rest of this video.